Vic presents the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory. Makers of Vicks Vapor Rub, Vicks Vaprenol, Vicks Cough Drops, and Vicks Inhaler brings you the Matinee Theater, starring Victor Jory and featuring Inga Adams and Arnold Moss in one of the most unusual plays ever presented on the air. Some nine months ago, when we started this series, we brought you this original play about an American hero in Russia. Since then, we have been constantly asked to repeat this fine romantic story, and so we have chosen it for the closing performance of the season. A man named Jones. Here's a good thing to remember when you catch a cold. The best-known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds is Vicks VapoRub. And now, Act One of A Man Named Jones. Today, come with me to the Russia of the 19th century in the days when Catherine was empress and law of the land. In the days when a commoner could not smile at a princess, but an empress could smile at anyone she chose. In the days when a handsome, dashing, fighting man came swaggering into the court of imperial Russia, a man named Jones. Mr. Jones. You were invited to Russia by the Empress Catherine for one purpose. She wanted and does want you to fight for her against the Turks in the Black Sea. We welcomed you here as a friend, but you are betraying that friendship. That's not true, Prince Nassau. I betrayed no one. I don't understand what you're getting at. Then I will make myself a little clearer. The Princess Anna Mikhailovna Kurakina is my betrothed. It's an arrangement that's agreeable to both our families and to the Empress. Your attentions to the Princess are extremely annoying to everyone concerned. The princess hasn't said so. The Princess is very young. She's with the Empress now. I think you'll find that after today, she will not wish to see you again. You think you're talking to a schoolboy, Nassau? You seriously think you can stand there and tell me that I'm not to see a woman again, a woman that I've grown to love and respect above all women in the world. Anna is a princess of Russia. She must live according to tradition. She will marry as she's told to marry, and she'll do as she's told to do. She will not see you again. You and I have reached an impasse, my friend. In my country, no one tells anyone what they must do or what they must not do, or even, and this may, of course, surprise you, whom they must marry. But you are in Russia, Mr. Jones. Fight your war for Russia. And then go marry in America. Sorry, Prince Nassau. I'd rather set my heart on a Russian princess. Then you've set your heart on a dangerous course, Mr. Jones. Danger? Oh, ha, ha, ha. Danger? Danger is my business, Prince Nassau. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an engagement to go driving with the princess. <laughs> Let's stop here for a moment. I used to come here on picnics when I was a child. There's a waterfall nearby. All right. Let me help you down. Thank you. <sighs> Beautiful here. There was a sadness to this spot. Don't you feel it? I did even when I was a girl. There's always been something about this place that made me want to cry. And now I understand. It was because of this hour that I would have to stand here. This hour when I would have to say goodbye. There is no sadness here. Oh, my darling, I cannot see you again. I've had my orders. Who gave you such orders? The Empress. Now do you understand? Listen to me, Anna. No woman or man or any other living person is going to tell me what to do or how to live my life. I'm a fighting man. I've fought all my life and I've lived as I please and how I please and I'll do what I think is right to do. Darling, you must not let them frighten you. I've been frightened of things all my life. I've been frightened of the dark, of the noises you hear in the dark. Footsteps and whispers and voices. I've been frightened of people, of their anger, of the things they can do to you. 
I've seen men and women beheaded. I've seen that, John. I've never been afraid. I've never been afraid of anything. Listen to me, my darling. I know Nassau, and I know my empress. They both know how to hate, and they both know how to kill when they hate. One loves me, and one thinks she might love you, and there is the danger. Darling, listen to me, and don't you be frightened. No one's going to hurt you. I'll fight for you and protect you, and no one will dare do anything to you. I'll take you home with me to Virginia. There's nothing to be afraid of in Virginia. The air is sweet with the taste of freedom. And the wind is sharp with it and the soil is rich with it. And no one will say you must not love or you cannot love. No one will say speak as I do or speak as I tell you. All that will be said is live here. Be happy. Say and do and think as you please. And all that will be asked of you in return is that you will love Virginia. It has a lovely sound to it, that name. Virginia. Oh, but I am of the courts of Russia. There is a pattern by which I must live and which I must respect. And if I defy that pattern, I will die. I know it in my heart. So I will marry Nassau, and you will be kind to the Empress. No, no, no you must not say that again. I love you. I'll never give you up. I'll never lose you. And right now I'm going to take you home and then I'm going to find the Empress and tell her. Well, Admiral Jones, rather astound me. I asked you here to lead my fleet against the Turks, not to choose a bride for my court. I will lead your forces, I will win for you, and in return, I ask most humbly for the hand of Princess Karakana. The princess is very young. You are older, far more sophisticated. I would think you could make a more satisfying choice, as well as a wiser one. But I love the princess. The princess is betrothed to Prince Nassau. But she does not love him. There are more things to be considered than love, Admiral, in our philosophy. Not in mine. <laughs> you amuse me. You are talking like a child. Well, be that as it may, next week you will set sail for the Black Sea. When you return, we will discuss the Kurakina affair. If you are victorious, you may find us more kindly disposed than at the moment. When I return, if I do not find you kindly disposed, I will marry her anyhow. Suppose you are told an empress found you charming. Would you still be satisfied with the princess? I love the princess. Very well. Go to the Black Sea. And when you come back, we will consider this matter again. Possibly you may change your mind by then. Good evening, Mr. Jones. Your Majesty. Well, Admiral Jones. Good evening, Prince Nassau. I've been calling on the princess. I assume you've been calling on the empress. That's rather obvious since I'm in her corridors, isn't it? Jones, I've warned you once. I'm not going to warn you again. Stay away from Anna. You're wasting the time and your breath. I love her and I'm going to marry her. Do I have to kill you to show you I mean what I say? That's the only way you'll gain your point. Then by heavens, I'll kill you. Stop. Stop this instantly. Do you hear me? Stop this instantly. How dare you brawl over a woman outside my apartments. Now, so get to your own quarters. I humbly beg your pardon, Your Majesty. Jones, you have even more to learn than I suspected. There is one bit more trouble over this girl. I'll see that she's put where neither of you will ever find her. There is the church to the right through those trees. Fine, we made it in better time than I had hoped. Oh, John, oh, John, this is wrong. I know it's wrong. Is, I'm so frightened. This is the only way, Anna. Now they will never be able to take you away from me. This way I can go to the Black Sea, and you need not fear, because no one will have the right to threaten you in any way. John, I don't know. I don't know. If you love me, Anna, you must trust me. Come now, give me your hands. They're very cold. Yes, I know. Come, my darling. <laughs> Holy 
Father in heaven, I direct your attention to this couple who stand before you about to be married. I commend them to you as they exchange rings. I beg you to bless this union and to protect it. Anna, I command you to love and to cherish this man. John, I command you to love and to cherish this woman. Are you happy this morning? Yes. Yes, I am happy. No matter what happens, no matter what they do to me, I'm very happy. They're not going to do anything to you. You're my wife. In Russia, we believe that happiness is paid for with tears. But if the happiness is a great happiness, it is worth any amount of tears. You're a fatalist. I'm a Russian. Darling, I love you more than anything in the world. I'm going to the Black Sea for Catherine, and I'm coming back for you, and we're going to Virginia. And I'll never leave you again, and you'll never be frightened anymore. I must leave you now for a few hours. Where will I meet you? I'll be going to the chapel this evening. I shall wait for you there. I haven't spent much time in chapels. You'll be making a religious man out of me. Do you never pray for anything? I never have. You must learn to pray. All right, all right, dearest. I'll see you this evening about ten in the chapel. I'll be waiting for you, my darling. Well, Anna Korotina. Your Majesty... I've been waiting a long time for you. My, my rooms are greatly honored by your presence. You have caused a great deal of trouble in this court. I am sending you away. No. Oh, no, please, I beg of you, don't send me away. There is a carriage ready and waiting. Get your things together. Where are you sending me? To the east. You will know your destination when you arrive. You are never to see your Admiral Jones again. Your Majesty, we were married yesterday. He's my husband. Married. Then that marriage will be stricken from the records. I did not authorize it. Therefore, it does not exist. So, get your things to go before I lose all patience with you. Yes, Your Majesty. You seem oddly composed for someone who has defied me and dared my anger. It's very strange, I know. But for the first time in my life, I'm not afraid. I'm the wife of a man named Jones. Nothing is going to change that. And I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Nessa! I want to see the Empress. I've got to see the Empress. The Empress will not see you now. She says your ship is ready to sail and you're to leave for the Black Sea within the hour. I'll not leave you, Nassau. Where is Anna? Where have they taken her? I don't know. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you. I can't sail without knowing where she is. I've got to find her. If you don't sail, you'll never find her. That much I will tell you. <laughs> ah, you're strangely pale for so brave a man. Your hands are shaking. Your eyes are a little wild. Can this be the man that fears nothing? Can this be the man that is never afraid? I'm afraid now. Oh, I am afraid now. In just a moment, we will bring you the second act of A Man Named Jones. These are the days when you never know about the weather. Warm one day, cold the next. Yes, it's cold catching weather. So be careful. And when you do come down with a cold, friends do what millions of folks do. Benefit by their personal experience and rub Vicks VapoRub on your throat, chest, and back. Then just feel VapoRub's famous relief-giving action start right to work to help relieve upper bronchial congestion and irritation to ease the coughing spasms, sore throat, and that muscular soreness of tightness. Now here's the reason results are so wonderful. Vapor rub penetrates, penetrates into the cold, congested upper bronchial tubes with its special soothing vapors, and at the same time it stimulates, stimulates chest and back surfaces like a comforting warming poultice. And for hours, 
This penetrating, stimulating action of vapor rub keeps on working to bring such grand and welcome relief. Now, when a cold strikes, remember, only vapor rub gives you this special penetrating, stimulating action. It's the best known home remedy for relieving miseries of colds. Time tested, home proved, Vicks Vapor Rub. And now the second act of A Man Named Jones, starring Victor Jory, with Inga Adams as the Princess Anna Karakina and Arnold Moss as Prince Nassau. <laughs> Admiral Jones, we are pleased with the victories you have won for us in the past years. And we feel that thanks to those victories, we have no further need of your services in a military capacity. I'm glad to have pleased your majesty. Victories always please me very much. We consider you the greatest admiral in the world today. Thank you. Now may I ask your kindness and sympathy? In what way? Where can I find the princess Anna Karakana? Admiral, the kindest thing I could say to you is forget Anna Kurakina. Forget her. By all the time I was fighting and winning, it was for her. I felt that every victory brought me closer to her. Forget her. I could forget everything in the world before I could forget her. I could show you a hundred, a thousand more beautiful women. They would not be more beautiful to me. Would you not like to sit here beside me and help me rule? And empire is heavy for a woman's shoulders. You wear yours magnificently, Your Majesty. What does this Anna Kurakina have that inspires such deathless devotion? I don't know how to put it into words. Unless there's beauty of soul. Somehow she makes you stronger and braver than you are, although she is not exactly a brave woman. She makes me want to kneel at her feet, and I'm somehow filled with gratitude that such a person as Anna Kurakina could be in love with me. Now, Your Majesty, if you'll permit me, I'll take my leave of you. Where are you going? Why, I'm going to hunt for Anna. I'm going to hunt the length and breadth of Russia until I find her. Russia's a big country. One could be in such a search. I would rather die hunting for her than to live without her. I wish you liked me better. You might have done well had you liked me better. Goodbye, Empress Catherine. Do you know where to begin your search? Yes. I think I do know. Nassau! Get out of bed and get your sword. I have an account to settle with you. You're a fool, Jones. You've lost I'll her. find her again. If you care anything for life, you'll tell me where she is. I'll see you in hell before I'll tell you'll you. will be there if you don't. Um. Alice, take that sword away from my throat. Take that sword away. Where is she? They, they took her east. That's all I know. They took her east. That's all. Yes. Well then, to the east. Good morning. Won't you dismount and rest a while, stranger? You look very tired. No, thank you. I'm hunting for a girl. She would have passed this way two years ago. A very beautiful girl with yellow hair and blue eyes and long braids that she wore like a crown. Her name was Anna. Anna Krakena. Anna... Do you know the name? I cannot say that I do, but dismount and rest a while, stranger. The sun is hot today. It is about the hottest day of summer. No, I've got to keep moving. I've got to keep moving to the east. Don't go out in a storm like this. You haven't the proper wraps to wear in a blizzard. Wait until the storm passes. I can't wait. I've got to get on. Too much time has passed already. Here, drink another bowl of soup. You look as though you hadn't had a decent meal in years. Thank you, but I must be on my way. I'm hunting for someone. I will pray that you'll find him. My husband has an extra coat. Take it and God go with you, stranger. Thank you. Thank you. to you, stranger. Will you sit and share a gypsy supper? I am Mother Anna. 
Anna is a name beloved to me. Thank you. I should be most grateful. Ah, how gay they are, dancing in the firelight. It's been a long time since I've seen dancing. I've forgotten how long. The dancers are always gay in the spring. You are a long way from the sea, stranger. Why do you speak of the sea, Mother Anna? Some people have a look of the sea about them. And you are one. The future is sometimes clear to me, and I know you are halfway. That's a little better on your journey, stranger. Do you also know the purpose of my journey? Yes. You follow a lady. A very great lady. Will I find her? You will find her when you have learned how to pray. Where is she? When will I see her? Where is she? I don't know that. I only know you will find her when you have learned how to pray. And your way lies further east. Further east. Further east. I am hunting for Anna Karakina. Have you seen a lady beautiful as the morning? A princess named Anna Karakin. I am hunting for Anna Karakina. I've told you somewhere in the east. I'm hunting for Anna. I'm hunting for Anna. I'm hunting for Anna. I found this man face down in the snow by the ravine. He was saying Anna Kurakina over and over. We must get him to the convent. He must have food and care. He has the look of death upon him. Uh, Would you like a drink of water? Who are you? I'm Sister Maria. I've been nursing you. Nursing me? Where am I? You're at the convent of Novo de Vici. Some shepherds found you unconscious in the snow. My friend, I'm not going to ask you any questions. It is not our habit here. You talked quite a lot in your delirium. I know that you're unhappy in torment. And I want to help you. Can you... Can you help me? When we are troubled here, we pray for help and guidance. You may find your help in prayer. Pray. Pray. I... I think I'd like to... to try. Come. Lean on me. I'll take you to the chapel. Dear Father in heaven, help me. I waited so long. I've, I've traveled such a weary way. I'll do anything if I can just find her. She's all that's good in me. She's religion and faith and holiness and life and healing. I don't know a lot about praying. But now that I look back on them, I think these past years have all been a prayer. Dear God, please. Please show me where to find her. Hello. Why? Hello. Who are you? I'm... I'm no one. Where's your home? Nowhere and... everywhere. That's a funny answer. Not so funny. Everyone can't have a home like you. Oh, this place isn't my home. My home is in Virginia, my mother says. Virginia? Virginia? What's your name? My name? John Paul Jones. John Paul? Jones? Uh Uh-huh. What's yours? My name is John Paul Jones, too. Mother? Mother? Yes, John. What is this? Anna! John? Anna, Anna, my darling, my darling, my darling. John, my dearest... 
I've been waiting so long. You knew I would come? I knew you would come. Are we going home to Virginia now? We are going to Virginia now. We're going to Virginia and we're going to live the rest of our lives together. And no one will say, say this or do that. All they will ask is that you will love Virginia. You taught him that. His father taught him that. My darling, my darling. In just a moment, an important message from Victor Jory. My friends, hear that melody. For 77 Sundays over another network, unforgettable melody has ushered in 30 minutes of music that has given so much pleasure to so many. Yes, as you probably know... It is the opening theme of the Stradivari Orchestra, with its rare and priceless Stradivari violins that weave such magical warmth and beauty into the melodies you know and love. Well, next Sunday, this popular Stradivari Orchestra, under the direction of Paul Laval and presented by Prince Machabelli, creator of Stradivari perfume, will be presented at this time. So don't forget, you have a date, a thrilling date, Next Sunday and the Sundays thereafter at this same time over this network with the Stradivari Orchestra. This is Victor Jory. Well, my friends, this is the closing play of the season. I want you to know how much I've enjoyed playing in these productions for you. I want to thank Vicks and Mark Warno, Dick Sandville, Martin Gable, Gene Holloway... Ed Wolf and Nick Dawson, our producers, and all of the production staff for their excellent work and cooperation. And I want to thank you, my friends, for your many letters of appreciation, particularly the thousands you have written during the past two weeks asking me to bring the matinee theater back to you as soon as possible. If you would like me to bring these productions back to the air quickly, perhaps even this summer, write me immediately. Many of your letters have been coming in with signatures of the whole family and other groups. Well, it's up to you. Each and every request will count. Write me care of Columbia Broadcasting System, New York 22, New York. May I repeat that? Address me, Victor Jory, care of Columbia Broadcasting System, New York 22, New York. And so until we meet again, thank you. Good afternoon. Our play was written by Gene Holloway and based on material on the life of John Paul Jones in the book Knights of the Sea by Valentine Thompson. It was directed by Richard Sandville. Music for the series is under the direction of Mark Warnell. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>